The Hanford site is home to dozens of cleanup projects as a result of more than 40 years of nuclear weapons production during World War II and the Cold War. After plutonium production ended in the late 1980s, the focus turned to cleanup of the Hanford site, including treatment of approximately 56 million gallons of nuclear and chemical waste. That waste is currently stored in 177 massive underground storage tanks built to hold as much as 1 million gallons each. Our agency oversees the, the efforts that they have for closing the tank farms and for managing the waste. The oldest system is the single shell tank system. Some of the tanks were constructed in 1940, so the single shells only have one shell, they're non-compliant. And right now there's about 131 of those tanks that are buried underneath the ground. These tanks are between 500,000 and 1 million gallons in size. Then the uh, other system that we have is the DST, which is the double shell tanks. There's 27 of those tanks and they uh, hold approximately half of all of the waste that we have in the tanks. So double shell tanks are the compliant tanks. They have two shells instead of one and the DSTs house the the waste until uh, the waste treatment plant starts up and, and begins treating the waste. Uh, my role is to make sure that they continually make progress on retrieving the waste from the SSTs in a safe manner and putting them into storage in the DSTs. Uh, the SSTs have some liquid level uh, monitoring that goes on. They also have groundwater wells that monitor if there's anything that gets out that starts to show up in the groundwater. They also do some visual inspections. They go into each tank, they take uh, uh, videos of them periodically uh, and they look and inspect the uh, interior of the tanks to see what's going on. If there's some intrusion, which is water getting into the tank, or if there's something going on with the, the concrete structure. The DSTs, uh, on the other hand, have uh, a shell within a shell. And so the primary tank or the storage tank uh, is enclosed by a second tank, which is called secondary containment. And so some of the systems that they use, again, they use liquid levels. For the primary tank, they also use liquid measurements in the secondary tank, and then they do visual inspections of the secondary containment, and they also do a, a non-destructive testing of the tank walls to make sure that they're not corroding. DOE has solicited the help of, a, of an expert panel that knows a lot about corrosion and, and monitoring and tank systems, and so they, they give them advice all the time. That's an integral part of how they manage the DST system so that it can be optimized and as safe as possible. Today, risk reduction is a top priority as Hanford looks to ramp up tank waste treatment. At the same time, maintenance of the aging infrastructure is critical to protect the workforce and surrounding communities. As a result of nearly two decades of planning, development, and construction, the waste treatment plant and the direct feed low activity waste facilities are the future of waste treatment at Hanford. In 2021, we had a huge success. We finally connected our tank farm system to the waste treatment plant through newly installed uh, waste treatment plant lines. Next year, workers will begin tank waste treatment. We'll be removing the solids and, and the cesium from the tank waste, staging an inventory of low activity waste for future tank waste treatment. We recognize that the waste treatment plant is really only able to treat about half of the, the volume of low activity waste. So we're also exploring additional technologies to treat that other half. And we'll be working with the state uh, to select those as we go forward. Meanwhile, workers have completed uh, removing the waste from 18 of our 149 single shell tanks with two more currently in progress. This waste is being transferred to our double shell tank system, uh, waiting for final treatment. As the waste treatment facilities ramp up, the cleanup mission has seen great progress. Under the guidance of the U.S. Department of Energy, Environmental Protection Agency, and the Washington State Department of Ecology, this environmental cleanup mission will ensure long-term protection of human health, safety, and environmental resources for the Tri-City community and beyond.